Hello again and welcome to my creative African cooking channel in Dudu by Fafa. Me always on you in Dudu by Fafa. Come on, Dudu and me queen. Fafa, come on, bring Dudu and blow Fafa. I love the flavors that all you love. So once you mix everything together, you are going to end up with a sticky dough, which technically they would say it's 76% hydrated. That's a technical term for it. Do you know what I mean? What I love about this recipe, there is no kneading involved. And those three ingredients that we used, the flour, the salt, and of course the yeast. And guess what? I guess water is also an ingredient. So four ingredients, may I say. I have to start counting properly. <laughs> and now, of course, I've covered it and I'm going to allow this to rest or proof, may I say, for 45 minutes. And after every 45 minutes, I'm just going to be lifting or teasing the dough. And that will just activate the gluten of the dough. So we'll do that four times, I know. So you gotta be patient with us, but it's so worth it. Considering it's a first experience, I completely enjoyed it. Now, if this is your first time, you're welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button yet, please do so. Yes, and the notification button so you do not miss any future videos. Now, this recipe was definitely inspired by my childhood. Because, of course, when one visits, you know, uh, grandma and tanti in Togo, Yes, the baguettes there, they were so crunchy and absolutely beautiful. So I just needed to emulate that and it's exactly what I'm going for. And especially when you have it with that Togolese spaghetti salad. Oh gosh, that will be my next recipe. <laughs> so you will notice that the dough by now is smoother in its like texture and it has this stretchy dough factor. And yet again, I dipped my fingers in water and left it. And then, of course, I cover it with my napkin. You can cover it with your cling film. On this day when I tried this recipe, I had run out of cling film. I know, it does happen to the best of us. But what I do like is the fact that I like to improvise. You know, if I don't have it, what do you do? Yes, of course, I use the napkin. And it was a warm day, so to get the dough to rise and you know was easier in that sense so here i've got my final look at that you could just see how it's breathing and it's just beautiful so it's my final proof and yes and then i'm going to be moving on to the next step now to my loyal subscribers thank you very much guys like yes we definitely have gone over the 100,000 mark. I absolutely appreciate each and every one of you, your comments, your likes, you've been sharing the videos. Yes, I appreciate you guys. So yeah, at this point, I'm just gonna be covering and this is my last proofing session. So of course, this is taking me a total of three hours to get to this point and there was no needing involved. Absolutely. Look at that. 
Look at how beautiful that dough is. Okay, we do. <laughs> As a first experience of making my own homemade baguette, I do have a lot of respect for, you know, the bakers and the bakery shops and, you know, getting your fresh baguettes from the boulangerie, as they would say. Yes. Um, yeah, I definitely appreciated it. But also I did like the ease that it took me in doing it because it was quite therapeutic. Because I was asked and I was like, oh, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? And it's such a beautiful sort of experience to have. Try it, you know. And I think it's something that happens with recipes. You might try a recipe, it might not work for you. You try it again and it might work for you. Look, you can have the exact same ingredients and cook things the exact same way. And it would just not turn out the exact way. It might be similar, but the flavors or tastes will be different. Because everybody has their own aura that permeates through their own cooking. So yes, definitely be open-minded with these things. But I definitely enjoyed the process. But I'd respected the process as well. Because yes, it is intricate in a way. Even though it's easy, there are a lot of factors that had to be taken into consideration. So what you've seen me do here is just to mold my dough into four parts and i wouldn't necessarily say they were equal parts but if you're one that likes your things like in that perfect way you can weigh it so you can have your four equal parts but me i was enjoying this whole process because it was the first experience the dough was sticky and definitely i think um yeah my surfaces were flat and I'm just shaping it as you can tell. So I do use my fingertips and spreading it and then roll it horizontally and vertically and into the sort of like um, oblong shape. And then I'm going to allow this to rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm just going to cover it with my napkin. Yes. Now the next thing is the shaping of this. Now traditionally, one would use what they call a kush. And that is a cotton cloth. Yes, um, you can buy it. But yet again, as I said, I like to improvise and use what I have available. So I'll be using my napkins here. And as you can tell, I'm just creating like four, would I say like gutters in a way? Yes, let's just say it like that. <laughs> so yes, um, I think I've got about three napkins here that I'm using. You can use your pillowcase, um, but it has to be very clean and disaffected pillowcase of course if that's what you have available but if not uh you can buy the traditional kush um from amazon i'll leave a link in the description box below so you can do so now what i've got here is my corn um flour so it's like coarse and um the reason why i've actually used that is because i just want it to be crunchy and i need that sort of like corn texture around it yeah so you can use your flour not a problem but i think it's best when you use the corn flour or yeah corn meal may i say when i say corn flour it might be confusing but it's corn meal anyway so as you saw me do um i'm just rolling this and i used my palm in sealing it but then rolling it um to this so let's repeat this here we go i'll be using my fingertips um, to spread it and then I just pick one end and then roll it in I think at this point I just kicked the camera so there was that mini earthquake it's like Charlie what is she doing but yeah just roll this as you can tell and when I get to the end I'll just use my palm to seal it exactly so there flour it a bit and you repeat this process till you've shaped your baguette now, you know, you can be fancy with the baguette, but this was the first experience. So to me, when I made it and it looks like something <laughs> like a baguette, I was happy with it. But I'm sure after I've done it a few more times, yes, then I'll be like the expert. And I'm still sprinkling it with my corn and meal. Yes, um, that. So yes, I'm just going to do that because, of course, I'm going to allow this to also rise. Yeah, so it's going to sit here for about an hour and a half. 
And what it does as well, because of the fermentation, it adds more flavor to the baguette. Now, at this point, I was quite satisfied. I was like, yes, I'm getting there. <laughs> so I covered, I was like, ah, I need to iron this. Can you believe it? I went and I ironed that napkin and I brought it back and covered it. So I got this tray thing for baguettes um, on Amazon. Yet again, I'd leave a link in the description box below. So if you want to buy it, that's great. And what I like about it is it's got those perforated holes. So that means that um, whilst the baguette is cooking at the top, it's also cooking at the bottom. It's making it crunchy. And it's not like just sitting on a tray that maybe might have a soggy bottom. And first experience here, you know, um, yeah, I'm just trying to like, you know, make some few incisions and I'm using the scissors. Um, but after I made this video, um, I did buy the cutter. Yes. And I'm just snipping it as you could tell. And I'm sure we could like, what? Snip it properly. But hey, that will do. So after an hour and a half and of me, of course, doing this, look, I now need to transfer it. You could just tell that like, yeah, it's not working, but of course I shifted it. And then I realized that I definitely need something that was firm so I could toss that in. All right. So this is exactly what I was doing here. You can see the struggle. Now this is real footage of what I went through. What well, exactly. And I repeated it till I got at least three of them on that tray. And here we have it. So now I've preheated my oven as well to 220 degrees. And yes, you're like, what's that stone doing here? Yes, the stone is definitely important because it's going to help me. It's going to help maintain that steam in the oven. And I've got ice cubes as well. You can use normal water, not a problem. The reason why I'm using the ice cubes is just because it would take a little bit longer for it to melt. Yes, you know what I mean? And that, you know, it would just like steam everything beautifully. It's just like that cold and hot thing going on. Yeah, you don't really need the ice cubes, honestly. So far as you have um, the steaming facility in your oven, you're good to go. So yes, I then placed the baguettes in the oven. And of course, I've got two trays at the bottom that are filled with water. Um, yes, as you can see, the stone is there. And on the right hand side, that is the, um, those were the um, ice cubes that had melted. After five minutes, I did open the oven and sprayed the baguettes with some water. But I was in a conversation with a popular YouTuber. Let's see if you can guess who it was. And so I missed filming that part because I was so excited and sharing my first experience of baking this with her. Yes, absolutely. Now you know the gender. Let's see if you know exactly who I'm talking about. So leave your comments below. And after 15 minutes, voila, we've done it. Yes, we've done it. What's the day? Vanuka. We don't call. Hey, <laughs> blue hair by fresh, fresh. So can you imagine smearing your freshly made baguette with your homemade butter? I've got that recipe already and I'll leave a link in the description box below. Please rate this recipe. Did I pass? Look at that. It's aerated. It's je. Personally, I enjoyed it. Naturally, I'll leave the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog in to do by fafa.blogspot.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat as in to do by fafa. So pass by and say hi. Narelle, thank you very much for my theme song. And on to my next video, which is going to be the salad. Take care of you. Be nice, be beautiful, be gorgeous. And I love you for you. Toodles. Mm -hmm.